Welcome inside the corner. It's the Coyote Corner video blog. Alex Hennard alongside Jay Elson, a fun series that we're going to be doing here on MidcoSN.com all season long. And we just had a chance to talk about the offense. Jay, let's talk about the defensive side of the football. This is a group that's got some uh, some returning guys who made a big impact last season, but some guys who are kind of finding their way this year. Yeah, the questions the biggest questions for this football team are all on this side of the ball, unfortunately, but uh, there's some talent here. There, there's guys to build around, and so that's what's exciting, uh, and certainly some playmakers. So, uh, you know, it's a work in progress, to say the least, um, but uh, I think they, li I, they like the early returns. Up front, this is a team that has got a, a bona fide all-conference guy in Drew Whittings. It was, it was a terror last year. Talk about him and talk about what's around him. He's a massive mountain of a man, that Drew Whittings, a guy out of Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, huge guy, and he's only gotten better. You talk to Jevin Bowman, uh, the strength and conditioning coordinator here at the University of South Dakota. You talk to Joe Glenn. You talk to uh, Marquise Williams, the defensive line coach. Everyone unanimously has said Drew Whittings is going to have a huge year. He had a tremendous offseason he looks bigger he looks stronger and, and somehow he looks quicker he's he's able to move that mass faster even than he did a year ago so I, I expect big things out of number 94 certainly he's going to be the guy leading the way uh, for that defensive line now it's a 3-4 scheme so obviously you're going to have a nose and you're going to have another defensive end at the nose Nick Jacobs is a guy who's he's going to be a third year starter he's dealing with some health issues right now so there's a little bit of a question uh, with him just because they don't know how long it's going to take for him to kick that um, and then on the other side, Sean Breedle played well in, in spots last year, got some experience, got a lot of time on the field. Uh, he's looking to be the, the, the other guy at starter. Overall, though, th this is a little scary for them right now because they're dealing with a lot of injuries, Breedle being one of them. They've shut him down. He's, he's dealing with, uh, with an Achilles thing right now. Uh, but it's more precautionary than anything because the lack of depth at this spot, like it was for running back last year for this team, could be a concern as we go forward because they're just running out of bodies right now. Uh, and a lot of teams deal with this in the preseason, uh, but but they got to get healthy and, and they need to get healthy fast. Yeah, we've seen a kid, Craig Krolikowski, who's a yeah. true freshman from winter, is, probably isn't going to redshirt this year because they need him out there. He's taking a lot of second team and first team reps. To be honest, he's, Craig's had a fantastic camp, and so I don't know if he would redshirt anyway. I think they would love to uh, have that luxury to be able to redshirt him because, uh, you know, Joe Glenn has told me in the past that that's how you get better as a football team. You redshirt your freshmen. Uh, but this guy has just come in and done a tremendous job. Like Iddings, he's a huge person and very strong, farm kid strong. And uh, so I, I look for big things. I don't know how quickly we're going to see those big things, uh, but certainly uh, look, look for him out there. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be calling his name a little bit this year. Behind that front three, a little more experience, a really talented inside linebacker core and on the outside as well. Guys still fighting for positions, though. A couple of grabs, a couple up for grabs still on this defensive side. Of course, Tyler Starr is no more. Mm -hmm. and, and so someone's got to step up and fill that leadership void. And, and Key and Loggy is going to be the guy everybody looks to to do that, the, the, the junior out of Sioux Falls, Washington. Uh, he's had a couple of tremendous tremendous years, uh, you know, got better uh, just exponentially, uh, you know, even from the time he first reported as a freshman to when he played his first game as a freshman uh, and to last year, you just saw the, just true playmaking ability, not all that dissimilar to what we saw out of Tyler Starr. They're very different players. Keegan's not as big as Tyler. Uh, but but he can make things happen, and so that's a good guy to build around. And then on the other outside spot, Ryan Hillier is a guy that's gotten a lot of experience. He's battled some injuries at times during his career, uh, but certainly a guy capable of holding down that spot and making some plays. Uh, and, and then you know Jet Moreland is a, is a guy who got on the field as a true freshman last year. Uh, you know he's looking good as well so far in fall camp. So uh, I think they're they're feeling pretty good about their outside spot. In, in the middle, they're actually pretty deep. And, and Austin Johnson is a guy you're going to look at. And, and this is a guy, a preseason All-MVFC uh, selection, guy that led the team in sacks last year. Uh, I believe he led the MVFC in, in tackles for loss uh, in, in conference play last year. Uh, he's, he's a guy that, that it's, it's tough to get him to stop disrupting things in practice and let your offense get better <laughs> because uh, he's just always making, finding ways to either get to the quarterback or, or blow up a running play. So uh, he's very solid in both, in both the pass-type defense and, and just uh, stopping the run. So he's a good guy to have back there. Pushing him at that same spot as, a, as, a, as another Sioux Falls kid, a sophomore. John, John Wessel, yeah. John Wessel, who had a who came on, had a very solid uh, true freshman season, and it, and is really pushing for playing time. 
uh, at, at one of those middle spots. So uh, that's a nice little combination right there at, at one inside spot. And Kyle Guziak came on, and last year, due to injury, kind of got thrust into the starting spot. He played very well. And so Kyle Guziak comes in right now as as it looks like to be the other starter at, at the middle linebacker spot. Devin O'Farrell, another Sioux Falls, Washington kid. They're all over the field here. Uh, is, a, is a guy that figures to, to probably work his way into the mix as well this year. So um, it, it's uh, – it, it's it's a deep position, and when you run a 3-4, you need a lot of linebackers. So that's a good good problem to have. Yeah, absolutely. And that linebacking core, maybe the strength of the defensive side where there are a lot of guys who we, we have seen on this field. Yep. In the secondary, huh. it's it's the exact opposite. Four starters from a year ago have all graduated. they got a whole new core back there. Yeah. Talk about how that group has been progressing this fall. If you picked one group uh, and just put a big circle around this and, and, and just put a question mark beside it, as the biggest question mark this there's no question this was it because anytime you lose all four position players in one group that could be a problem and so they've got to fill all of those spots and there's a number of guys uh that are that are factoring into that equation right now and they're just trying to determine who's our front four and and, and that's not an easy decision to make steve yeah. Kelly, talent yeah talent's not the issue that was going to say no, yeah. absolutely not these guys are there's playmakers all the way down that list uh, but Steve Tellefson is the only senior among that group, and he's one of the guys that's kind of emerged as, a, as one of the front runners at, at cornerback anyway. Uh, but just from a leadership standpoint, Steve's done a nice job in fall camp trying to step up, trying to show young guys how it is, how they're going to do things uh, at this level. And so just, just from an experience standpoint alone, uh, and Steve made some nice plays last year. He yeah. contributed on the field as well. Um, but he's, he's certainly going to have a much larger role uh, this year. Chris Tyler's a JUCO kid they brought in, uh, won a JUCO national championship, uh, big body. Uh, made some plays in the spring game. A lot of ability there. Michael Lilly uh, is another Juco kid that, that, that came in. Smaller than Ty Tyler, but very quick. Very, very quick. In fact, Joe Glenn says he might be the fastest guy on the team. So you like that's, corners, that's saying something. We have some fast guys in this USC like squad. Corners to be fast. So that's a, that's a that's a good thing. Uh, so those those three guys right now uh, are all uh, in, in the equation at cornerback. Will Armistead has has come in and had a pretty nice fall, fall camp as well. So he, uh, he'll be in the mix at corner as well. Then at safety, Jacob Warner is a guy that that redshirted last year. I believe he's a def defensive scout player of the year mm -hmm. for this team and has stepped in and seems like he's pretty well locked down one of the safety spots. Uh, aside from him. Uh, it's a little more uh, open right now. Tyson Graham uh, is a guy that is a converted wide receiver that has a huge body to him. I mean, he's a 6'4 guy. He looks like a football player. And so they're just trying to connect all the dots uh, so that he understands the position and learns how to play it the, the proper way. Uh, but certainly some ability, some athletic gifts there. If Tyson could put it all together on the mental side of things, make everything match up, uh, he's, he's going to be a nice, uh, nice player uh, at the safety spot. And then Zeke Lewis is, a, is another young guy who got on the field a little bit last year, battled some injuries, uh, but has come in and, and, and is certainly uh, one of the top guys, one of the top options at, at, at the safety spot as well right now. So uh, they're, like you said, they're, they're there. They're, these, are, these are guys that, that can, can make plays and can help this football team. It's just a matter, I think, of determining which ones are going to be able to do that on, a, on the most consistent basis. And that's, that's a question for every team coming in at fall camp. You want to find the guys who are going to help you the most and the most often. And, and so that's, that's what they're trying to determine with that group right now. It's certainly a big test coming up on August 30th against Marcus Mariota and the Oregon Ducks. So they're going to they're gonna be baptism by fire uh, if, if you've ever seen it. So uh, certainly the secondary, a work in progress. Yeah, well, a lot of talent there, to be sure, and all across the defensive side of the field. We'll have more about that defense and offense in the coming days. Certainly, the Oregon game is looming large, just yeah. about a week and a half away, so much more on that to come on the corner. Thanks again for watching the University of South Dakota Coyote video blog. It's The Corner.